So now we got the most challenging limb. Because we definitely don't want to swing that over the house. That's just too close. But I have my other rigging point over there on the opposite end. Now, if I had the ability to lift, this would be a great time to use it. I would shoot to be lifting it towards that point over there. And... Uh, But what happened was that we would aim a notch that way because this is, proportion-wise, this is far too big a limb to take all in one piece. We're gonna have to take it in more than one piece. We would shoot our, uh, our notch back towards that point. We'd have to make it really open. And what's gonna happen at some point, this is gonna peak, and now your hinge is gonna be the only thing that's gonna keep that from breaking and dumping into your system. So. Another case where I love to put a butt line, so I'd have a butt line on this because when that breaks off, I don't like how that can jolt into a system that's had the stretch pulled out of it already. It's kind of, and again, this is my opinion, this is my take on things. This may not be how it necessarily is. I don't have scientific evidence to back this up. But when you're cranking stuff, yeah, we're lifting, but you're also kind of taking the stretch out of it, which is sort of where that energy absorption comes from when you dynamically load. So if I take all the stretch out, I crank something up, and then I dump something into it, it's gonna be just a little bit harder on my gear and a little bit harder on the tree. Not detrimentally, because we've taken most of the dynamic out of this by lifting it, but we are gonna get a little bit there. So then I like to put that butt line in to control as it comes off and goes into that cut. But we're approaching that, we're approaching this with the stipulation that I don't have a way to lift this thing. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to switch my rigging point. Which is gonna be more work for the climber because now I've gotta go back over to here. Now hopefully, I was here, I came up, I'm over here. So I'm not too far away from where I need to be to make this switch anyway. So it's not the end of the world. I make that switch, I go out here, I take this with me. Now, the further out I put this, the more, all right, where's my, the further out I put this, the bigger swing this is gonna take, the further distance, the furthest distance it's gotta travel. And then this butt wants to spear out this way towards the house. Now I'm obviously gonna put a butt line on it, but I'm not gonna, tie it out necessarily that far. I know this is close, but I do do want it somewhere between balanced and near balanced and still able to maintain this clearance that I desperately need in this situation. So I'm gonna eyeball where I think that might be. I think it might be here. Again, a spider leg would be great. I didn't bring one. You can kind of make one up with the rope that you have. It's a bit of work. Now for something like this, I wouldn't do natural wraps. I would absolutely use some kind of sling or, or some kind of hardware here because it really needs to hold the butt. It's very important. With natural wraps, when it's not so critical like it was here, it was just basically to add a little help to the rigging point and to be used easily as a, a tagline later. But for something where we really must have that butt not go anywhere because Sometimes those butts can kick wraps off and they can do wild things if, if the piece is tied off in, a, in another area. So this, we're making sure that this ain't gonna go anywhere with this hardware here. Oh, this is gonna be hard to put a notch in this. <laughs> okay, now if I was lifting, the notch would be up here and I'd be aiming it at the pulley. I can't lift anything, so I wanna find sort of a sweet spot that's not defying physics, basically. I can't. A notch completely on the side might work, but I'm gonna have to have somebody pulling and breaking this hinge. Anything above that, that doesn't make sense. It just doesn't work with gravity, you know, because I'm not able to lift. So I'm gonna do somewhere maybe down here, and let's see if I can even get it with this 
the way this is set up here. There's your notch there. Got a little bypass to clean that up. I think that'll work pretty good. So now we're gonna stick our butt line in here. And this one definitely needs to be held somewhere, somehow. Ground guy takes a wrap or something, or you have the kind of aerial friction device that you can lock off. Something. Try to get this distance close, too. I want this, I don't want this to travel very far at all. I want it to be tight as possible. So, let's have a, let's have a groundy hold this for me. Oh, I went off. Ah, oh, you can get away with holding it right there. Hold it right there. So now if I was really like wondering about, oh, is this, is this gonna pivot? Is there a little bit more weight this side? I would take the time to put some kind of pull line here so that they can ensure that it goes this way. I think I'm fairly confident that it will go this way when it starts closing the notch. <laughs> See if I can hit my hinge here. Leaving a little hinge here, and we're just gonna illustrate how it works. So this is gonna bend, and it's gonna do what I want it to do. Created that pivot point right here, not too far on the side, because you're asking the hinge to do something that is not gonna work, because gravity is gonna wanna break it off. It, it will pivot to a point, and then this isn't gonna be able to keep it tight enough, because the angle is gonna start closing, so we'll wanna break off like that. If you take something somewhere between where gravity wants to take it and its actual lean, usually somewhere around the 45-ish area, you've got a better chance of swinging it and holding it longer. That's my thought on it. I could be wrong. But I've seen it work, and I've, I've made it work a lot. So that's what we're doing here, and you can go ahead and start letting it out, let the butt line out. And now we're slowly introducing this you know, good amount of weight into the system. We'd probably have both guys Lowering it at the same time. So now the hardest part of the tree is done, really. Well, the hardest part in the canopy is done. We can do something similar with this, same deal, but now we're our pivot point's way back here. We got much less uh, actual material over our target. So now I'm starting to feel good. We would probably proceed, yeah, right with this. I don't wanna take too much of the tree apart. Tie this off somewhere here, butt tie this here, same deal. Same, it's like the same formula, I just keep applying over and over again in different ways, really. Um, this over here, we got plenty of clearance. Maybe we got open yard, just bomb it. Anything you can bomb and get away with, that's always great because you're not rigging stuff you don't need to rig. You can rig it if you want to, if you want to give uh, these guys sort of a, an opportunity to maybe stick a ball cutter underneath something or if it makes cleanup easier, maybe you do it. But if you don't have to and you don't want to put the added force and the added, uh, added risk or the added uh, weight on your slings and your pulleys, don't have to. So then we would proceed with this and then we'd probably take this out and spur back up and then we'd start taking off the easy material. All this is pretty, pretty easy stuff. Now this, this right back here is kind of worth talking about. Just because it looks like, oh, this is this is totally, totally easy, right? Well, this will be my model for it. You got this piece out here, and that rigging point back there is kind of taking it where we don't want it over near our target. Maybe not directly in line with our target. So I would probably keep this pulley and just scoot it down to here, and then flop that into that system right there and that would share the load nicely instead of putting everything on one pulley right there. So we'd share the load with this, just move it down to here, lower it, probably do the same down here too. So I've taken this in half, I have my pulley here for it, send that straight down back here. Now I'm over to this, 
I got my pulley with me anyway. I'm not gonna send it back there. It doesn't need to go back there. It's not gonna help anybody. That's taking it back towards my target. I keep my redirect. Even though that's a little bit more force by flopping it into, into my pulley right here, I'd rather take that than have anything thrown in that direction and have anything swing back that direction. This just keeps it out here a little bit more. Take that out. And I would have taken this already, by the way. We would have gotten this out of the way. And then you're looking at your top over here. Pretty standard, uh, easy stuff to get out here. You put your pulley here, you flop it down. Now we're looking at wood, okay? We're looking at wood close to the house and all of you guys have seen when stuff comes down and it flops down, I'm not allowed to cut the orange part, by the way. When stuff comes down and it flops down, if people don't let it run, or if uh, something you know gets locked up for whatever reason, kind of bounces, skips off to the side sometimes is a possibility. We don't want that. We want to be able to let this run perfectly to the ground. You might want to consider taking additional measures. Now, if we can't, if we can pull this wood into here, we're absolutely gonna do that. Then that takes that takes all the, the risk out of the rigging part of this. That That's just now it's your hinge and your direction and we're going this way with it. And we don't have to worry about flopping anything or anything bouncing off of anything else. Wood goes there, bang. Pretty nice and easy. But if we do have to rig this down, so the direction you might send it might be not that way because if it does pendulum back now it's going towards the house maybe somewhere kind of to the side or somewhere out here if you're really worried about it if you're really if your boss is really freaking out about it and if you have the hardware to do so a twin system which uh and not not double blocking a twin system meaning two ropes two pulleys side by side, with, but you need two lowering devices for this, or you need one big Stein double bollard lowering device for this. Give me a second, and I'm gonna take this apart, illustrate what I'm talking about. So yeah, this is a Reg Coates original. That's the first guy I ever saw do this. And basically, he would do it in order to take larger pieces and spread the force, uh, spread it over more components, more rope in the system, more pulleys. What we're using it for here, I mean, it's gonna, it's gonna do that, it's gonna accomplish that same thing. But what it also does when you let them out at the same time, it keeps the piece in line. It keeps it from skipping off to the side. You got the, run, the one rope in there. Got the other rope in here. So now when this goes over, if you set it up right, you lower it right, this thing flops down, hopefully you let it run. If for whatever reason it doesn't run correctly, it's not gonna skip off to the side. It's not gonna get near your house. It's gonna be held right here. As long as you don't let one out faster than the other one, it's gonna, it's gonna do this and hang like this. And again, this is something extra that you're only going to set up if you really feel you need to have, that you really need to, and your boss or whoever you're working for is very paranoid about this rope or about this skipping off to the side or, or coming anywhere near this house. Ideally, you just one system, let it run to the ground, and you should be fine. Extra precautionary overboard style stuff, but it does happen, and it's just an extra option that you have to do it with. Yeah. And beyond that, you're just doing that until you get to a point where you can chunk wood or just pull wood or pull a full trunk and then call it a day. Jump in your car, get out of there before uh, they try to make you cut the trunk up. And that's what contracting life is all about. Bye.